their man very far, though Undertaker was able to hit a shot on Brock over the top rope to get back into the match. The two had smashed each other with huge punches and knees, yet neither seemed to feel the effects. The WWE Universe wanted to see which Titan would blink first here.
Brock had Undertaker against the ropes here and was ready to start putting it on him immediately, but ran into Undertaker's boot. The Phenom would need to stay alert and push the action if he was going to conquer the Beast. Brock refused to give Undertaker any room to breathe, smothering him whenever possible. And the effects were clear on Undertaker's face. But Undertaker would catch Brock with another big boot, and that gave him the opening to take Brock to school. Old school. Brock continued to shine in WrestleMania's most dangerous scenario. How did Brock manage to catch Undertaker like that? Proving time after time, he would not wither. But Undertaker would show his supernatural resiliency, able to kick out of the F5 when it certainly seemed to many that he was finished. Undertaker was struggling in there with Brock, but wasn't out yet. Surely he'd be able to get back into this match and continue his WrestleMania domination? Brock's face is the picture of frustration here, but it seems misplaced when he's got firm control of this match. The big question right now is what can Undertaker do to get back into the match? How can he keep the streak alive?
Undertaker gave everyone one last moment of hope as he elbowed free from Brock's F5 attempt. But a match that had seen Lesnar thwart Undertaker at every turn continued that trend. Will the Tombstone be the answer as it had been so many times before? The way Brock manhandled Undertaker to get him set for the F5 after he reversed the Tombstone, looking back, it's so obvious that Undertaker's out. But at the moment, no one believed it was over, even after the F5. It was Undertaker. He Rollins is strut on the ropes. Just like that, Rollins had neutralized Orton's offense and looked ready to pour it on further. What adjustments would Orton have to make now that his RKO had failed him? And would he be able to make them in the moment against Rollins? try for another RKO, knowing that the quick strike would be the end of Raw.
opponent finally put Seth in a bad spot and backed into the corner, looking to deliver his infamous punt kick. With a stomp, the same stomp that had taken Orton out of action for months. Made another attempt at the RKO as he had done throughout the match. But then, in a moment that will play in highlight reels forever, Randy Orton unleashes possibly his greatest RKO ever to stop Seth Rollins in his tracks. The Viper never looked better. Some people think it was respectful, you know, like Roman's not done yet. I saw it as Lesnar not wanting to let Reigns off the hook so easy. Brock Lesnar was out to humiliate Roman Reigns. He's hurt, so keep hurting him.
It was going exactly how Brock Lesnar wanted it to go. Roman Reigns would give everyone a glimpse of what he had inside, somehow kicking out at two. For the first time in the entire match, Brock Lesnar seemed at a loss as to what to do next. Would he just have to hit F5 after F5 until Roman stayed down? Everyone in the stadium thought Roman was done after that F5. He was showing us all exactly what he was made of. And it was clearly starting to frustrate a once supremely confident Brock Lesnar. When Lesnar hit that ring post, everything changed. Roman was now in control, and he had badly hurt the champion. He's not a machine. He's a man. Once Brock had made it back into the ring, Roman knew he had to act immediately. Lesnar had dominated the match to this point, and Reigns likely wouldn't get another chance like this. One Superman punch landed, rocking Lesnar. A second Superman punch would connect, and Lesnar was on rubber legs as he fell into the corner. Lesnar looked out on his feet, and Reigns appeared to be catching a second win. Reigns' attempt at a third Superman punch was caught by Lesnar, but Reigns couldn't bother to be impressed by the feat of strength. A storm of elbows and headbutts freed him from Lesnar's grasp and allowed Roman to hit the ropes and finally hit the third Superman punch, taking Lesnar down. A huge spear took Brock down again, but only momentarily. Roman didn't panic backing up into the corner immediately. Roman Reigns leveling the beast with another heavy spear. But fate had other plans, with Brock kicking out at two. Now it was Roman asking himself the questions. What more do I have to do? Can I beat Brock Lesnar? Can anyone beat Brock Lesnar? He had to dig down for whatever he had left inside to give Lesnar one last shot that would end this thing once and for all. Looking for a fourth Superman punch, Reigns instead found himself in Lesnar's clutches, once again victimized by an F5. Fortunately for Roman, the damage had been done to Lesnar, leaving him incapable of making a cover of any kind. Unfortunately for both men, Seth Rollins' music hit. Was he really going to? There was no way he was crashing the WrestleMania main event and cashing in Money in the Bank. With both Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns having taken serious amounts of damage to this point, what in the world could possibly stop Seth Rollins from completely stealing the show and the WWE World Heavyweight Championship?
Rollins had crashed the party, but he wasn't looking to stay long. He looked for the stomp on Brock Lesnar, but found himself set up for the F5. But that spear from Reigns would be his last gasp. And with nothing left in his energy reserves, Reigns would fall victim to Seth Rollins' stomp. And in one of WrestleMania's most shocking conclusions, Seth Rollins walks out of Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar as the new WWE World Heavyweight Champion. You had to feel for both Reigns and even Lesnar as the two had thrown everything at each other. Ronda Rousey was the obvious target for Becky and Charlotte, but Ronda immediately went on the offensive, bullying Becky back in the corner. And then turning her attention to Charlotte Flair. Ronda wanted to prove immediately that despite the stature of her opponents, that it was she who was the dominant WWE superstar. Outside the ring, Ronda would not let up, connecting with a Piper's Pit, not only to Becky that threw her into the barricade, but also to Charlotte Flair, planting her onto the floor. A second attempt at Piper's pit on Becky proved to be Rousey's biggest mistake, with Becky shaking free and throwing Ronda into the ring post. Trying to keep her momentum, Ronda ran right into a boot from Becky, staggering her long enough to allow Charlotte Flair to perform a suplex of her own to send Ronda into the barricade herself. Rousey had overwhelmed Charlotte and Becky with her blitzing offense, but Becky was able to compose herself quickly enough to avoid another Piper's pit leaving Ronda on the defensive early in the bout. Now, as we all know, a triple threat match is every superstar for themselves. But despite not being friendly with each other, Charlotte and Becky realized that it might be best for them to focus their efforts on Ronda. Looking for a double powerbomb, Ronda would manage to reverse, putting Charlotte in an armbar. But this freed Becky and allowed her to drill Ronda with a low drop kick. With Ronda out of the way, now the queen and the man had the ring all to themselves.
With Ronda still down and out, Charlotte looked to take it up a notch. Her standard knee drop was made more devastating by the removal of her knee pad. And now Becky Lynch was in a bad situation. Charlotte did not let up, repeatedly slamming Becky's face into the mat. Charlotte was making the most of Ronda Rousey being down, willing to put Becky through the mat if it meant she'd leave WrestleMania as the Raw and SmackDown Women's Champion. When Charlotte tried to interrupt a reverse DDT to Ronda, Becky just added her to the mix, hitting a standard and reverse DDT combo to both. While her attempts at getting the pin failed both times, Becky was now in firm control and didn't show any signs of letting up.
Eventually, Rousey found her momentum again and managed the jaw-dropping feat of placing both Becky and Charlotte into arm bars. Realizing that they were better together, Charlotte and Becky would turn the tide on Ronda. Muscling her up and hitting her with a series of double team power bombs. Ronda did her best to fight free, but was overwhelmed by powerbomb after powerbomb. The two worked well together, but that wasn't the plan. The second she no longer needed help, Charlotte sent Becky to the floor. Charlotte knew exactly what needed to be done in that ring, looking to get the pin when she saw Ronda down. The queen was in top shape, and despite not getting the pin, she was rolling. Finally, Ronda broke free, and I remember thinking this was it once she hit Becky with that huge running knee. It was academic at that point. She rolled Becky to set her up for Piper's pit, struggling through the exhaustion and pain to lift her up. And then Becky did the unthinkable. Reversing into a crucifix pin, she was able to surprise the former MMA champion with a pinfall to win the match. Becky Lynch. Ronda was not happy, feeling she'd gotten her shoulder up, but the decision stood, and Becky was named the winner. All three women left it all in the ring. While Charlotte and Ronda were not thrilled in failing to win, neither had any reason to hang their head in shame. Standing in the ring, holding both titles high,
Break that hole! Yeah. <laughs> 